After the new driver becomes proficient with driving the first vehicle they have ever driven, it would be great if they can get experience with other vehicles of different sizes and handling characteristics, though insurance ramifications will need to be considered. The aim is for them to realise the techniques are the same, but vehicles accelerate, brake and corner differently. For example, heavier vehicles take longer to brake and thus need a greater following distance from traffic ahead. This is also when experience needs to be gained in situations like wet weather, gravel roads, steep hills and night driving. If the young person wants to learn to drive a manual vehicle, a simulator can be used or you can return to the quiet low traffic area and practice clutch control and gear changing before traffic is reintroduced. The bend in the knee, explained in part 3, will become critical when controlling the clutch pedal. If you have access to a manual four-wheel drive vehicle and can find an open off-road area, the vehicle can be put into low range. The low range gearing meaning the learner can practice to shift up and down through the gears without needing the speed usually required for higher gears. Plus, it is almost impossible to stall a manual in first gear low range. Consideration also needs to be given for what the driver licensing system doesn't cover. How to handle challenging situations which is what a defensive driving course provides, where the limits of a vehicle's grip are and where the limits of a driver's talent are, since if these are accidentally or intentionally discovered, bad things tend to happen. How to operate a four-wheel drive vehicle off-road. Additional training would be required to learn how to use the different modes, systems and how to recover a stuck vehicle, plus how to tow and reverse trailers. A driver's licence does not cover these topics and this is why so many companies and government departments put their personnel through additional post-license training. It is required under the Workplace Health and Safety Act as a license is not regarded as adequate staff training in vehicle operations, plus this training is tax deductible. This is also why thousands of school groups have attended a defensive driving course with us over the last 25 years, because these educators, or the parents of the novice drivers, realise there is more to driving safely than obtaining a driver's licence. The licensing system also hasn't covered skid recognition and recovery, and in some countries with snow and ice weather conditions, such training is very important. In Australia, with limited snow and ice, and with stability control fitted to all new vehicles, skid training is less important. If the young driver is going to exploratory learn and test their limits, such training is probably beneficial. At least they will learn in safety and know the correct techniques. My daughters have no interest in cars and fast driving despite their dad's profession and so to date they've done very little skid pan training. They're not likely to get into a skid due to their behaviour and the vehicles they drive have stability control with quality tyres fitted. The research into teaching young drivers skid control is very condemning in that it creates overconfidence and a show-off sense of ability that leads to more risk taking and ultimately more crashes. Certain skills are not needed on the road. But to think our licensing system has covered more than primary school levels of education is fanciful. So let me throw a few topics out there to highlight what knowledge is typically missing from learning to drive. How vehicle safety systems like ABS, SRS airbags, traction control, autonomous emergency braking and stability control operate. How to brake to the threshold point and generate maximum deceleration and the shortest braking distance. Dispelling the myths around whether you can brake and steer at the same time, which includes the friction circle of a vehicle and knowledge of trail braking. How tyres actually grip the road, tyre wear patterns, build dates and correct pressures. Improving the driver's visual field, scanning, understanding target fixation, limiting points and blind spots. Experiencing alcohol, drug and distracted driving impairments in a safe training environment to dissuade real life misadventure how to perform vital vehicle pre-start checks and solve common breakdown problems like jump starting and changing a wheel, the dynamics of vehicles such as understeer, oversteer, yaw rate, slip angle and what to do in a spin, how to drive an automatic without the D for dream mentality and when to use its auto gears that are available for a reason, speed versus braking distance and mass versus braking distance and the effect of kinetic energy on braking, Experiencing a vehicle's braking distance at different speeds to know the stupidity of tailgating. Four-wheel drive operational modes including H4 mode, L4 mode, when to lock the centre diff 
and front and rear differentials, the use of hill descent control and how to stall recover off a hill, how to cross mud, sand and still water, the dangers of four-wheel drive recovery equipment misuse and failure, and so much more that the licensing system overlooks. Further training or no training results in two types of vehicle operators, drivers who are passionate about the task of driving and doing it correctly, and commuters who drive from A to B without much understanding of the vehicle and the art of driving. As they say, many drivers don't know they don't know, as they are unconsciously incompetent. My company, SDT, now has three new online e-learning courses available. Defensive driving, safe four-wheel drive operation, trailer towing and reversing. Each comprehensive program has modules with embedded videos, training notes and questionnaires. These courses replace the theory components at our practical courses. After completing any of these online modules, you can attend a practical defensive driving course, practical four-wheel drive off-road course, or practical trailer towing and reversing program. Vehicles and trailers can be supplied. Training can be a certificate of attendance or assessed to nationally recognised competencies. And we are teaming up with other training providers who wish to resell these e-learning programs to their clients. I trust these how to teach the basics of driving videos have been useful to the people you care about. Remember our company motto, safe drivers are lifesavers. I wish to thank both of my daughters, my wife and my staff for their invaluable support during the making of these eight videos made during the coronavirus lockdown, April 2020. This process helped keep me mentally okay. Safe driving everyone. Our driver training support doesn't stop there. If you go to our YouTube channel at SDT Australia, you'll find videos on the various courses we offer, plus over 40 free to access videos on safe driving. These include videos on the correct use of roundabouts, traffic light tips, braking distance comparisons, crash testing that we have performed, tyre safety, carjacking prevention, and the list goes on and on and on. So please feel free to access these videos and I hope they support the training you are planning to deliver.